Okay, so this week, House Democrats are going to be moving forward with plans to remove President Trump from office in the wake of the deadly riots on Capitol Hill. In a letter last night, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment, which essentially would declare the president incapable of carrying out the duties of office. Pelosi says that if the vice president does not respond within 24 hours, she will move forward with the impeachment process. And joining us live right now to talk about this is former state Senate President Mike Herodopoulos. Good to see you, Mike. How are you? Good morning, Amy. So we've already heard over and over again that there's very little chance that Vice President Pence is going to invoke the 25th Amendment. It's never been used in a case specific to this. In the past, it's always been used, you know, if, if a president is going into surgery. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the use of the 25th Amendment is very unlikely. I, I do expect the Democrats to move forward in the House of Representatives and, and look to impeach the president, much like they did last year and had been trying to do for all four years he has been in office. Uh, but I, I don't expect the Senate to take action on it, but I do expect the Democrats to move forward with impeachment. I would not be surprised at all. I think it's, uh, I'd like to see us focus back on uh, now a new president coming to office, but uh, this is where we stand at this point after that ugly incident last week, which just, was just pathetic. Mike, I was watching an interview with Mick Mulvaney over the weekend, and he was talking about this impeachment uh, versus the last one. And sort of, it, he said the first one was more on policy grounds, and, and he didn't feel that the president had done anything wrong the first time. That, of course, dealt with the Ukrainian incident. He said this time around, though, he said this impeachment looks different. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it does look different because of the pathetic events from last week. I mean, there was nothing patriotic about these idiots who chose to storm the Capitol. Uh, they're nothing more than thugs. They're just like the idiots in uh, Portland last summer who attacked the federal courthouse. I mean, this is uncalled for. It's unacceptable. And, and why we need to prosecute people who do such corrupt actions, pathetic actions, and put not only lives in danger, but it's cost the lives of people not only here in Washington, but around the country this summer. This is no solution. Violence is never a solution and only hurts people politically, let alone, of course, professionally. I was listening to a Rick Scott interview today as well, and he was saying, Look, we just got to move forward, that if we sort of get bogged down in an impeachment process 10 days, or actually less than 10 days before uh, President-elect Joe Biden gets into office, that it just sends the wrong message. What are your thoughts on that? I think Rick Scott has been a real leader in this scenario. He, he has said at, at, from the beginning, look, uh, it's time to move forward. I think he's right in telling the president of the United States, Donald Trump, that attend the inaugural. This is America. It's about the, tre the, the peaceful transformation of power. Yes, a lot of people are upset about the election, just like Democrats were four years ago upset about the election. It's time to move forward. Uh, we're going to have a real opportunity to kind of reset the clock on January 20th. The margins in both the House and Senate are very tight, and so the likelihood of of, of radical legislation passing will probably diminished, and hopefully we can find a new path forward, especially as we're still struggling with the COVID crisis. Well, let's talk about that new path. Uh, President-elect Joe Biden will be taking office in a, less than a week and a half. What do you think that he will tackle first? Well, I would think that the unifying effort would be how do we better tackle the COVID crisis? How do we continue to have high rates of testing? How do we get these vaccines that disseminated across the country quickly so we put the most vulnerable uh, at the front of the line like we've done here in Florida? I think that could be the, the unifying message. I think another unifying message might be the infrastructure in our, our state and our nation. I think a lot of people want to see those two items moving forward. But if he starts towards a more radical agenda, I think we'll just see the hyper-partisanship we've seen over the last four years. But I think it's a real opportunity. Close margins in the House and Senate should allow for some bipartisanship to move forward. We need it desperately as a country because we're truly hurting right now on many fronts. Yeah, we are. What do you think about that $2,000 stimulus? I, I know that uh, Joe Biden said, hey, if we get these two uh, Democrats elected in Georgia to the to this, uh, Senate, that that could be a possibility. Do you think they'll push forward for that? I do. I think that that's a campaign promise they made and, and winning the you know, close election here in Georgia and now controlling the Senate. If they're true to their word, they'll move forward that $2,000 item. And I'd, I'd likely see Republicans support that effort. All right. Uh, former State Senate President Mike Caradopoulos, always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for being with us.
Thanks for your time, maybe. Have a great morning. All right, you too. We'll see you soon. All right, new this morning, Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, who represents Seminole and Orange County, says she supports impeaching the president. In a tweet, she writes, Congress has a constitutional and moral obligation to provide a check and balance on the president to hold him accountable for inciting violence and insurrection and to preserve and protect the Constitution of the United States. Our coverage of the fallout from the chaos on Capitol Hill continues online as well. Just go to Fox 35 Orlando.